Hello, and welcome to another episode, my third episode. So today we got a very special, cool, and unique car in. It's called a Cobra Vic. So it's a Crown Vic um, made by Ford and Roush. They teamed up to make this special one out of 18 cars. There's only 18 examples. Here she is. I already got her up in the air. I'm gonna do some, or a lot of engine bay restoration and I'm gonna do all that, remove rust, before I even wash the car because I don't wanna wash the car and then make a mess in the engine bay. Uh, but a quick look on the inside. We got harnesses. Uh, again, five-speed manual, T45 tranny, I believe. We even got racing harnesses in the back. Got the full cage. Very unique car, for sure. I like this thing, it's pretty cool. <laughs> So anyways, very fast background. This car got painted a few months ago, or maybe it was six months ago now, by another shop. They didn't do such a great job. So the car has been brought to me. We're gonna do a lot of correction on it. Again, a lot of engine bay restoration, completely clean the interior. You would think the clear is in good condition. However, I'm going to hit the light here. Light on, it replicates what the sunlight would show outdoors. Indoors doesn't look so bad but this is showing the real world outside and we already have a ton of swirling going on for a fresh painted car, which is unfortunate, but we will correct everything, apply a sealant that will make the wash process easier, better hydrophobic properties, also reducing in swirling, but we got work to do here. Not any big deal, but we will have a mission here. So my plan, I'm gonna start with the engine bay. I'm gonna show that to you in just a second. Do all the restoration needed, clean out the rust, paint parts, probably a full day, if not a day and a half of work in the engine bay alone. Then I'm gonna jump to the interior, call that mostly done. I'll take the car outside, wash it, bring it back in, clay bar, and pick up the normal pace as we usually would. Machine polish, paint correction, um, apply sealer. We'll do some rust treatment. Uh, I see we got some rust here um, for the cooling. Booster there for the reservoir brackets um maybe something in here all right i pulled off the brackets for the uh reservoir cooling reservoir um they were over there de-rusting in the de-rust bath i'm gonna pull these nuts here uh pull off our latch and we'll go put them in the rust bath as well Okay, so for the brake booster, I removed all the rust that I could with sandpaper and a uh, belt sander, but you can see we got Hydrate 80 here, um, probably the best rust converter on the market. It actually works. We're going to use a foam brush, apply it to the um, rusted areas and small localized surrounding areas. Um, after that, it's going to be scotch breaded and apply epoxy primer over the remainder of the brake booster. But this stuff goes on kind of a palish, light blue. As it cures, the process happens, it begins to turn black. And that is a good sign. That means um, everything is working out. So yeah, just brushing away, getting all the tight spots. All right, the vacuum is in the wall. Hooked on the car so we don't drag and mar up the bumper. Vacuum's gonna turn on while I uh, use the belt sander. With scotch bright it's going to take all the dust away so it doesn't get all over the place we're going to strip this pipe down to bare metal prime it and paint it obviously it would be far easier to remove the pipe entirely however the seals going into the block could be a can of worms and the owner does not want to get into that so we will respect his wishes and just work around it okay applied epoxy primer on the brake booster same here for the cooling pipe. I already got it all down to bare metal with a belt sander. Took a little bit of time, but um, that's okay, part of the process. I use Tamco 770 high build epoxy primer with corrosion inhibitors, which will keep it from rusting out and keep it protected. Only thing to do now is sand everything by hand, get rid of all the pits, finish it off with 500 grit sandpaper, and hit it with black. 
As far as the EGR itself, it is pretty rusted and the pipe going towards the back and then the firewall is seized on. So I told the owner, he said, um, just do what you can with it hooked on the car. So here I'm applying uh, Dianex gel from Build Hamber to remove the rust. I, after this, put it in a Ziploc bag with some tape and I vacuum bagged it just to keep it from drying out overnight. Okay, while the gel is doing its thing on the EGR, here I applied Letrox on the brackets, sprayed them with black. They're gonna go back inside under the reservoir here. The pipe itself is painted semi-gloss black, the cooling pipe. The brake booster is wrapped in foil just so it doesn't get disturbed because it's fresh paint while I clean the rest of the area back there. Speaking of that area, I'm gonna use a little bit more Hydrate 80 on this area I found right in here. Um, I saw that and figured we can do a little bit better, so I'm applying it with the acid brush. Again, it's designed to go directly over rust only, but overlapping over sanded paint definitely is not gonna hurt anything. If anything, you want it to be in localized areas besides just rust, so you don't have anything creep up on you in the future. All right, I'm buzzing away on the interior. I wanted to do the interior before the exterior just because we're doing a lot of cleaning, a lot of carpet extracting. Um, inside, we already abstracted all this. It is looking pretty good. The seats are nice. Um, we did the belts. Obviously, what's not looking so nice is the rusted nuts holding in this um, seat here. So I'm gonna put those in my rust bath. Even though the owner and I did not talk about this, it's gonna be kind of a freebie type of deal, but that's fine. Happy customer, happy life. We're gonna take care of these stains in here. Same thing with this bracket. The only thing left to do is abstract this driver's footwell area. Alright, took the seat off the frame. Now I just dropped the seat back down on the frame so we got uh, the bolts coming through here. Again, we did not do a perfect job painting. We just painted these brackets here where it's obvious when you open the door. For our free spinning washer nuts, I'm applying a little bit of ferrosol here which will creep down into the grooves to keep it from rusting from the inside out, working it in there. Got to wipe off the access, of course, um, just so we can get a nice cleaner bond with Dynex UC, which is um, a wax I'm applying here, completely clear, transparent. You'll never even know it's there and it will provide excellent rust and corrosion protection. Finishing off with little Dyna slip going into the threads as you thread the nuts on they will self spread and protect the stud and the nuts themselves from rusting out so we had three different products going on the nuts themselves most will say that's pretty overkill but overkill is what we do here okay engine bay work is done interior is completely done um, I even took the car outside and washed it. It's back in, it's been clay barred. Um, so now it is time for, not the most exciting part, but a necessary part, paint inspection. I'm just gonna make it quick, but you can see now how many uh, scratches we really got going on in swirls. Got a lot of solvent pop going along edge of the bumper, completely dry spot. Solvent pop, we can't do much to recover just because it's in depth within the paint. The owner is cool, he understands. Not everything can be corrected through machine polisher, but you can see we even got sanding marks. They tried to correct their errors. 
before it left the body shop. See sanding abrasions in here. Again, we see dry areas around here. They tried sanding it and correcting it before it left the body shop. Around the back of the headlight, you see we got a lot of solvent pop in here. Down in here, this may look like a water spot. This all might look dirty. This is all dry clear coat. They just shot it too dry. There's absolutely nothing um, I could have done in the wash or clay bar process, but we can correct it with a machine polisher. This in here is wet sand, or yeah, it's wet sanded, but not polished. They, tr they attempted to polish in here, and you can see they left evidence of their uh, polish residue inside. They didn't go back and clean up the polish. Overspray in the bottom corner of the window. Next morning, uh, today we're going to dedicate paint correction. All the cutting stage is completely done and I already started the polishing stage. I used my new 3401 Red Beast Edition from Flex. For those that don't know, they only made a thousand of these units and they're pretty awesome. They got an internal piece from a retired 4,000 horsepower dragster motor that they remelted and formed inside. You get a certificate that you have one. My plaque, I got 469 and I couldn't help it I also got another one and this one is 38 for whatever reason 469 it's got a little bit more power runs a little bit better um, so this will be my uh, new workhorse pretty excited about it this one I'm thinking I'm gonna punch a hole in the wall Recess it inside have a nice glass uh, display unit. Finish everything by um, the finishing stage. So we're going to use uh, the Rupes 3-inch and the Nano. Mm -hmm. 